welcome everybody to the video. Welcome to Goodwill. Um, this Goodwill trip is a bit of a bonus day. We typically um, uh, usually hit this Goodwill about once a week. And uh, this is actually another a uh, uh, little bit later in the day than we typically do. Than we typically come to this Goodwill. But uh, this is on a Sunday actually, which is not Usually Sundays we'll branch out to other Goodwills in our area, um, not the ones that are on our usual. Uh, you see here usually on these videos, they are usually along our you know our route. Uh, so we thought we'd pop it on a Sunday. Sundays aren't typically the best days. We have found some good stuff, um, but it's I mean there's a lot of stuff here, but it's pretty slim pickings for a reseller on Sundays. And so we're going to go ahead and, you know, scan the shelves. We're not going to pick up too much on this trip. Uh, it's just kind of a, you know, pop in. <laughs> you know, if we really don't have anything to do. We will usually just, ah, let's pop into a good little really quick and see if we can find some profit sitting on the shelves or anything cool for us or for the house. We've got this really cool White Sox pinstripe hat. I think it's older, but I'm not really sure if it's an older one. Um, I'm not ultimately going to end up getting it. It's just, um, oh, the white sauce hat. You know, I'd oh, have to clean it up and fix it. I know. And I, you know, and it's not really good. They moved all the glass behind the counter. In order for me to do that, it has to be a really good hat. Yeah, all the glass, like where the glass was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the money was not there. The shoes are, the glass I'm go through the time. It's, it's behind the counter now. Reshape it a bit. It's, it needed a little bit of reshaping. You and I will reshape packs if like they are uh, the counter. If they, you know, if it's if I deem that it's necessary to sell uh, the hat, I will the resha brain? reshape it. And it's got to be a, you know, it's got to be a pretty good hat in order for me to, you know, get all involved with reshaping. And it's ready for Christmas, that. love. It's ready for Christmas, love. That one just isn't there. Man, the Philippines. Talking too oh, much about that hat. Kind of, like a, <laughs> it's a cool hat, though. I am a huge oh, Chicago White Sox fan. Going I'm also a huge Oakland A's fan. Oh. Um, but Chicago White think Sox. He, I think he does something like my like favorite players like of all time. Well, actually, my favorite player of all time, Frank Thomas, came up with hmm. the Chicago White Sox. Great American Fun yeah, Corps. I mean, I Great American Fun Corps. Look at I did sell off a lot of my right. card collection, I mean, even my Frank Thomas cards. I kept some of the key cards, the rookie cards. Um, some cards that I just really liked. Uh, I held, held on to those as well, too. But that's how much Chicago White Sox fan. I'm a huge Frank Thomas fan. And Frank Thomas did eventually sign with the A's for a little bit. And I did get the chance to meet him and autographs mm -hmm. and all that when he was uh, a local to me. Scan here, look for electronics. Now, one thing about electronics I do want to mention, um, because I have a pending return right now for electronic, and is the return rate for electronics is usually pretty high. Uh, for anybody that sells in the electronic category, you'll find that that's where most of your returns will lie, is in that area. And I test everything. I test everything before I send it out. Make sure it works. It's clean. If it's not working, then I will, I'll say it's not working and sell it in that manner. And I think I've told you guys this before. If you're buying like computer electronics, sometimes you know if you do want to get into that area, start to try to you know branch out into different areas. Um, check to see what it's selling for parts, and maybe you can buy it. And it's worth it to buy it and sell it for parts. If it is, you often do that research. Um, but the big money is when those items are actually working. You can test them and, work and make sure they work. Then you can really get some big profit for some of these items. Now, my return right now that I have pending is um, for a stereo. A little SpongeBob stereo. I listed it as not working because there were some elements of it that were not working. The radio worked. That's about it. There were some other issues with it. So the guy opened up a return request, and mind you, he left me a negative feedback, but um, that's going to get taken off really quickly. This uh, GameStop bag, I was trying to figure out what this bag was for. It turns out that's for a um, GameCube. 
So, but you see this, you have a GameCube bag. Um, you know, should be able to resell that for about $25. Um, and so they, op they wrote a negative review, opened up a return request. I'm still waiting for it to come back. They opened it up about a week and a half now ago. I'm still waiting for that to come back. I already contacted eBay and they said, yes, you're in the right. They're going to remove the negative feedback. However, because there's a current open request that needs to be closed, so I can do one of two things, just wait until that item gets sent back to me. I should say three things because I can wait till the item gets sent back to me or I can wait and if the person doesn't send it back by a certain date, then, you know, that request is closed. Um, or I can just refund the money and close it. So I'm leaning towards waiting to get that item back <laughs> is what I'm leaning towards. Um, then once that case is closed, then the feedback will come off my account because it was sold for parts and the reason why they were returning it is because it doesn't work. So, but I stated that it was not working. So, and that's what I'll do with some electronics like stereos and stuff. Um, just because the radio worked doesn't necessarily mean that the whole product is working. So I can't sell it as a, as a working item because not all the elements are working. Like I had a CD player, the CD player wasn't working. And I stated that and I listed it in the four parts not working section there. So, be cautious in the electronic world. There are returns, so be prepared for that. Um, most of the time, it's because people don't read, or most of the time, it's be, it's, it is user error. I come from the IT world, computer world, and 95% of the time, user error. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, things could get damaged in shipping, yes, but... Um, you know, just make sure you package, package things well. I will have my shipping channel linked down below. I am reposting. I took about a week off on that shipping channel. Um, just because it, it was being, it was beginning to take up too much time in my shipping. And, you know, I got to move through shipping pretty quickly to get items out. Uh, same day, uh, next day, 20, within 24 hours or so. Um, I've kind of just revamped it. We're just doing three items. And I'm going to pick out the three probably most interesting or most um, complex, maybe. Or just things I want to talk about items to ship. <sighs> All right, we're in the green aisle, green or and or teal aisle. I grabbed that pig, but mm, ultimately I'm going to put it back. It's not really worth too much. So far in the cart, I am going to stick with that Nintendo 64 case that will sell pretty well. I'm going to scope out the golf clubs. <laughs> Spotted this football. Oh, not football. It's a, um, a rugby ball. USA rugby. It appear. I, I'm going to put it in the cart. I'm just going to hold on to it. I'm going to think about it. The comps look like they might be good. Um, but when I really squeezed it, I could hear air coming out of it, so it sounds like the, 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 um, air bubble thing on the inside is popped. And I'm not about to, <laughs> you know, try to fix a flattened football. Or rugby ball. Is rugby, are rugby balls called football? I don't think they are. I really, this bag section here at, at this Goodwill, isn't that great? Um, yes, we found a Yeti cooler one time here, and it was, you know, an amazing sale. Amazing to find it. We found it for, it was only like four bucks, and we sold it for 200 So, there are big hits, so you gotta look around. You never know. You never know what you're gonna find on these shelves. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you can't, well, you can't rely on those big hits. Uh, they do help as you're, you know, you get your regular sales and all of a sudden you'll see like a 100, 200, you know, whatever your big hit, you know, number is. It could be different for anybody. It really depends what you're selling. And we're going to check out this little white pottery area. Let me know if you guys see anything here. Let me know what you guys think of the shelves here. What should I be picking up? What would you pick up? What would you pick up on these shelves here? Because I'm not really seeing it today. And uh, 
and this goodwill does turn over a lot of a lot of products so you know the next go back and go back next week and they'll definitely have some more stuff. some of the same stuff will definitely be there but they'll have more stuff there and uh, stuff for resellers there are a lot of there are a lot of resellers that visit this goodwill so do not get discouraged by you know I see other people reselling you know it's you know, I, I can't you know I, I can't compete with them or whatever don't worry about it there are a lot of resellers out there and we all get great stuff to resell so do not just get discouraged by a busy goodwill or by competition trust me there's plenty to go around and some people might not even sell in your category or some or whatever you whatever categories you sell in. Some people might not even sell in those. So, but it, it, but you do need to have um, you know multiple uh, sources of uh, multiple sources sources of. <laughs> I was gonna say sources of income, but it's not really. I guess it's income because you know. I'm buying this stuff and I'm reselling it for a profit. So, yeah, you got to have different Goodwills to go to. There's Savers. There's other, you know, other thrift stores besides Goodwill. Um, flea markets. You guys know I like to go to the flea market. I'm going to have a series of flea market videos coming out. And we're picking up a bunch of stuff. Um, flea market. There's garage sales. You know, garage sales happen all the time. Garage sales aren't necessarily the best. But the, the best for finding products. But... I think garage sales get the best price at garage sales. <clears throat> We're in the mug section, checking out some mugs. Matter of fact, I packaged up a mug today, so that'll be featured in my next shipping video coming out. I'll probably have that come out tomorrow. I was gonna try to do daily daily releases on that, but it's really you know, daily release is tough. It's really tough. Um, because of all the, uh, you know, editing and, you know, making sure, you know, you, you, if you have to edit anything out, you have to then flash some information that's not supposed to be there on the screen. I got to do the voiceover, which requires me to watch the video, <laughs> which is good because I can kind of proof watch. I thought this mug was pretty good and it should meet our target about 20 bucks on that mug. Um, it had like different little recipes on it. It was kind of cool. This here is... I had to do a little bit of research on this because it was very well made. And the two acorns should have given it away. But it's actually a um, syrup. A syrup uh, pitcher. Or pour. I thought that was kind of cool. And once I figured out what it was, I realized there's no profit to be made in that. There is zero profit. It's cool. There's zero profit in cool stuff sometimes. Again, the metal strikes again. Right when you think you have a great metal item, it's not. <laughs> there I am. I scanned it with Google Image. You know, Google Image is your friend. You need it on, you know, some of these adventures where I am, you have no idea really what that is. It looked like some sort of a stein to me or something, but I was like, it's not really a stein. It looked more like a pitcher, maybe like an olive, like an olive oil pitcher. But thanks to Google Image, it's syrup container. And that's the reason why the acorn Acorns from the maple tree. Maple trees have acorns? Oh, actually, I'm going to Google that really quick. No, maple trees do not have acorns. So why are there acorns on that thing? They're produced by oak trees only, I guess. That's what it says. Why are there acorns on that? That's weird. All right, we have some more metal here. Enough with the syrup container. I do like good maple syrup. Oh, man, it's the best. Is the best. Although I grew up with Mrs. Buttersworth. Log cabin. 
And then it comes to find out it doesn't really have that much maple syrup in it. It's mostly corn syrup. Find out when you get older all these little weird little secrets that these companies kept from us. It's like it's not maple, it's not 100% maple syrup. What? what Alright, we got the. Got, this is something interesting. We got a little um, Lucite engraved Disney. I, I, you know, I know what it is, but I can't find anything on it. It's pomp and circumstance. Um, it's and like a little. Um, what do you call it? Disney. Negative. Disney. I'm thinking it's used to make the animation. But it's really cool. It's only it's encased, so it's encased in lucite um, or acrylic. They are the same thing chemically. They're the same exact thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's any value here. Let me know what you guys think. Is there? Do you guys think there's any value there? I don't know. I can't find anything on it. I Google imaged it. I was searching, you know, uh, therapy. I don't know. I don't have worth points, so I can't search worth points. So I'm gonna put it in the cart. I'm gonna buy it. It's gonna be a gamble. We'll see. And uh, hopefully, it turns out to be a good gamble. I mean, it's not like that much, so <laughs> not a gambling bag here. But a cool item. Cool, cool item. And we're Disney fans. So. Alright. Alright, we're moving here. We're moving through the uh, miscellaneous pottery. Here's a Hallmark ornament. You want to look out. When it comes to Hallmark ornaments, um, I know the birds. Do you find anything with, like, just just the birds they do really well i've bought and sold the uh, the rudolph the red nose reindeer the car that the animation the characters from there you know they had uh, a bunch of uh ornaments from all the different characters and those sold incredibly well there was even one where it was a one you can record uh, and make a voice recording on it it was like a little uh, record those things sold, I think, like 40 bucks a piece. And they were tiny, tiny, and they sold, you know, easy to ship. <clears throat> so, but most Hallmark ornaments really, really aren't really worth it. So, I'm not picking that up. I'm going to put it in the cart just to look it up later, but I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to put it back. You gotta scan them. Most of them have barcodes. Some of the older ones don't, but you can easily scan them with with eBay and <coughs> the eBay app and check to see if they have any value or not. Uh, I think this is apartment fifty six item. I believe. I'm not hundred percent sure. They don't want too much for it, but. Mm, I'm not end up, like, I'm not gonna end up taking it. It just doesn't have a. I don't know. I just don't think it's gonna go for that much. I don't think it's gonna sell that well. Sometimes you just get a feeling, you know, just from buying and selling for so long. Um, you'll see the item on there, then you'll just, you know, you just have that gut feeling. You're like, man, eh, this might sit around for a while. I don't want to sit until next year. It is a Christmassy item. I am in the Christmas section, as you can see, they got the full section of full of Christmas now. So, uh, you gotta get your Christmas stuff up and relist it. Hello? Hello? Are we on the Christmas? Are we on the Christmas? I'm yes. gonna put the both of those Hallmark All right, come on down. Really Over here. All right, come on down. Need your help. Over here. Need your help. Get back. Get back. So we're definitely gonna take the N64 case. We're gonna take that little uh, loose sight acrylic. We're gonna take the mug, and uh, I don't know if it's in this video or not, but we, I found this little uh, like keyboard device. It's by. I'm gonna do the recap though. But a little keyboard device. I'll put in the recap for sure. 
So I did end up picking that up. That should make us some good profit as well, too. So I did buy some electronics. Not discouraged by returns. They're going to happen. They happen in every single consumer type of business. Some of these little target things can do pretty well. These ones will not. Um, that might be a little bit too new, but some of the older ones mm -hmm. will do pretty good. So be on the lookout for them. Google them. Some of them have oh, names, actually, so you can look them up you by name. Them up? No, I Type in them. target bird. No. And the name. Just look at but right either now. way, let's go ahead and head into the recap here. Okay, everybody. Welcome to the recap here. Um, <laughs> my eyes are getting kind of watery here. The weather's acting very strange uh, I don't know where you guys are at in the country or world but all of a sudden we're in a heat wave here it's October 19th it's almost 100 degrees and my allergy just started acting whenever the weather seems to change my allergies just just go bonkers so I'm um, dealing with some watery eyes today but either way we hit the flea market earlier today this is the recap though for the Goodwill trip only a few items, nothing crazy here, um, but I think some good items. I mean, first off, I got the coffee mug. In hindsight, you know, after doing a review, it might not have been the best deal. <laughs> it was two dollars and sixty-nine cents, but I thought it was kind of cool. And what really, you know, I think I can get it sold for around fifteen, maybe twenty. Might be a stretch now that I'm thinking about it. But um, what really got me there was a recipe for chilaquiles. Oh man, chilaquiles are the best. I right, what do they they say here? One egg, a tablespoon of milk. Mm, I guess sometimes some people add milk to their eggs. Um, yeah, salt, pepper. I like to add butter to my eggs, by the way. Um, salt, pepper. Uh, speaking of eggs, <laughs> going off on a tangent. Speaking of eggs, I was at Whole Foods the other day, and I noticed they have um, heirloom chicken eggs. Really good. So. If you guys see them, you'll probably have to go like Whole Foods or some sort of, you know, organic store. But heirloom chicken eggs, pretty good. Especially with some butter. New, um, the Costco butter from, uh, I think it's from New Zealand. Oh, man. Those were good. Either way. <laughs> um, what else is it? Salt, pepper, five tortilla chips, tablespoon of salsa, sour cream. I usually leave out sour cream, shredded cheese. Finely chopped green onion, and it gives you the whole detail right there. Look at that. Wait, see microwave on there? And stir. Is that a microwave meal? Oh, are these? I think these are microwave meals. You know what? Now that I'm reading it, yeah. Okay, it's because it says beat the egg and milk, da da da, and cheese, stir, da da da. That's also microwave on high for one to ten minutes. Garnish. What? Okay, I might be able to get 20 bucks for it. I didn't realize these are microwave meals on here. <clears throat> and not just like, you know, pre-made meals. How to make a meal using the microwave. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to... Because the one I saw listed, um, it just said, you know, it just had all, you know, the usual lunch, lunch hour, coffee mug, cup, um, recipes, white. So, I mean, that's about it. I mean, not really... I mean, this is kind of, I think, being able to make stuff in the microwave, that, I mean, nowadays, I mean, I don't know, this might be a vintage mug, but nowadays we have air fryers and air fryers and Instapots. We don't really need the microwave that much anymore, but it's kind of cool. It might be a good selling point. I might drop down into a short if it does sell. <clears throat> okay. This is the item I got off camera. It's a Timex. It's like a... A computer, a uh, old computer for your, um, for your TV. Here's all the connections there on the side. It's got the old connections there. Comes with a power source. <coughs> Look at that power brick right there. <laughs> so this is kind of cool. So I come with the power supply, and it doesn't come with any other cables, but. It's kind of weird, too, because when you look it up online, when you're looking up the comps, a lot of them say, because um, you'll put a condition, you new, used, uh, parts, but all of them say not specified, so I'm not sure, I'm going to have to do a little bit more. When I create the listing, I'm going to have to dive a little deeper into what category this should be placed into, 
because a lot of people are putting not specified on this and still selling for over $50. So there were some low ones, but they didn't include like any cables or anything like that. I think um, I'm probably looking about 40 to $50 on this. And I paid $16.49. Uh, probably not the best buy, but it's still going to be within our profit margin. And it's computer stuff. I love selling computer stuff. So I might even try to test this. I think I have... I probably have cables that can fit this. But it looks like it, there's a, one for a mic, one for a ear. It says ear, but probably headphones. And there's a cable here for a TV. So I'm going to test that out. I might be able to test that out. So I might. And then, let's see, what else we got here? Oh no, that's not that. <laughs> oh, here's the, um, so this is the carrying case for the GameCube, Nintendo GameCube. Now this one here, I'm thinking 25 to $30. There were some actual Nintendo branded ones uh, that go for $60, $70. This one is missing the shoulder strap, as you can see it has thing there. But I mean, you could probably use any type of strap with a hook, but at least it has that, the handle there. And it has spots for games. So pretty cool and easy to ship. It's just a little square, well, almost a perfect square. <laughs> uh, but that should be like 25 to $30 on that guy. Then the one, the one that's I really don't have any clue as to what to price it at. I might price it high and just look for offers and take the first one that I think sounds good to me. There it is. Let me get my head out of there. <laughs> but it says Pomp and Circumstance, October 22nd, 1997. It's like a it's like a negative, like a photo negative. And we pay 13 I paid up $13.59. So paid up for it. I really have no idea what it's going to be worth. Pomp and Circumstance is from Fantasia and Donald Duck. Uh, it has to do with Noah's Ark. And Donald, I think, plays his helper or assistant um, on the Ark or maybe not on the Ark. Yeah. So I'm not 100% sure. I haven't seen Fantasia and so can't even remember the last time I saw Fantasia. Something's in my eye. But that's what that is. That's what that the the um, subject matter is, as far as what this is going to cost, uh, or what it's going to sell for. I have no idea. I might just price it high and just see what happens. Hundred bucks, and see what happens. I don't know. But if you guys have any insight, if you've seen any of these before, if you've sold anything like this before, let me know. Drop down the comments down below, and that'll help me. Give me a little. In, give me a. A starting point at least because there's nothing there's no history on it so I don't know um, I think it's valuable because it's Disney it's old vintage but again that could not mean anything that could not mean that it's actually valuable but I suspect it is we'll see we'll let the market decide um, and you know there's so a lot got something in my eye it's really annoying me this these allergies are just <laughs> so annoying i wish the weather would decide what it wants to do so um letting the market decide what things are worth you know and the market is the consumer the person that's actually buying it it's you it's you me um people on ebay you know we're sellers we tend to think of ourselves and just as sellers but we're also consumers. Um, I buy on eBay. I buy online. I buy on Amazon. Um, you know, I go shopping and Target and stuff like that. That's the market. Those are the those are the people that are driving the cost of this product. So when something's very popular, you know, like let's just take Apple products for example. When Apple, when you know, Apple goes to price their items, they're pricing it based on the history of what it's sold for in the market. And the market is the consumers. So when you're going to price stuff and you're going in there, you're going into looking, you know, you're looking at eBay sold history. 
you know you're trying to get an idea of what something is worth based on what the market is telling you based on what consumers are actually paying for that item now it's far different than retail you know it's far different than walking into a store and buying something um, because you know we're dealing mostly with secondhand items mostly used items and in that world of used items you know prices are just you know they can fluctuate generally they don't fluctuate that much but you will find it from time to time you know you'll see like you know sold for 13 13 13 13 and then all of a sudden you'll see oh what's this 30 dollar you know why did this one sell for, for that much could be a fluke it could be you know maybe somebody promoted it and then it got bought maybe off of um you know because when some people like search in google like they'll search for something in google to to buy it may give them an ebay you know an ebay listing to buy that and they'll see it and they may you know automatically agree to the 30 bucks and yeah you know, that's how that 30 dollars shows up so sometimes there are outliers but generally, you know, just look at the average and that'll give you a good idea of what to price stuff at. Would I recommend somebody going out there and buying something like this with no sold comps? No, I wouldn't. Um, but what, first of all, what made this interesting to me, it has Donald Duck in the subject matter. It's a Disney product. It's vintage. It's in Lucite or acrylic. And I mean, I did pay up for it. I wish... I didn't pay so much for it. I wish it was more below $5. But I think it can go for quite a bit. And that's just based on my knowledge of selling for 24 years, reselling for 24 years on eBay and selling Disney stuff. I know Disney people are, you know, a lot of them are just are big time collectors and they'll pay up for stuff. Oh, my, my hope is that this is incredibly rare. It's Disney. I, I know I sound like everybody out there that's that's trying to sell, just trying to sell anything, basically. I mean, this is incredibly rare, in my opinion. I, mean, I should state that first. Just because, let me state, just because there's none listed, just because I can't find it on Google Lens doesn't mean it's rare and super valuable it could be rare and not valuable that you know just because i can't find it doesn't mean it has incredible value i'm just going off my history of selling and i believe it's valuable i believe it's rare uh what someone's going to pay for it well mine might be the only one out there to decide what the market is willing to spend on an item like this so those are my thoughts uh for this evening it's evening for me right now that I'm finishing shooting this video. Um, otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to the new subscribers out there. Um, I'm posting a lot of shorts. I'm trying to get like three shorts a day. So just of, you know, things you guys should be looking out for. Um, bolo items, stuff like that. So if you guys can check those out as well. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys in the next video.